Now, much of the anticipated fall economic statement will be presented on that day. So, will that fiscal restraint come through in the statement? With us on this, armed with fresh reports today showing some new budget shortfalls, is Canada's parliamentary budget officer, Yves Jihou. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. Let's start with that clip and what we just heard from the Prime Minister, that this government always exercises fiscal restraint. Do you agree with that? Well, I'll let the adjectives to other people, but what we have noticed is that spending uh, has increased at a very steady pace over the last several years. Granted, there was a pandemic, but even outside of pandemic spending, there has always been steady increases in government spending, including in, in the number of federal civil servants. Mm -hmm. So the pace of increase in spending has not significantly slowed down over time. So if that is fiscal restraint, well, I'll let people who are watching judge whether it is fiscal restraint or not. It doesn't sound like you think it is. Uh, no, I don't think it is fiscal restraint. Do you think that that foreshadows what we're about to see in the fall economic statement? Or do you hope that it foreshadows that? Well, that's up to decision makers to make that call. But there are still a couple of promises that have not been costed or booked in the fiscal framework. For example, there's a disability benefit bill that, was, that received royal assent in June. Mm -hmm. And there's no detail as to what form this will take. And the benefit level, the clawback, or the eligibility criteria. There's a national pharmacare program right. that has been promised for which we don't have details. And these two programs could cost anywhere between 13 billion per year to 30 something billion per year. So that's the type of details that are yet to be made available to Canadians. And at the same time, this government is facing pressure not to continue to overspend, to continue to spur inflation. So how narrow is that needle eye that they have to thread next week? It's, it's very narrow. That's always a very delicate trade-off when you have an economy that's running at uh, uh, close to capacity. It's slowing down now. Uh, at the same time, as there, in, there is inflation, and the governor of the Bank of Canada is saying that government spending, and not only the federal, but government spending in general, is probably contributing to uh, some extent to inflation. So that's a very delicate balance that the government has to, has to, 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 uh, to, to walk on. Some of the spending that you have calculated and looked at was specifically on the government, uh, the money that they've put in on the EV uh, battery manufacturing plants. Um, the government offered some big subsidies of the promise of return on investment. How good was their math in your estimation? Well, it's always tricky to estimate how long it will take for government spending or investment to be recouped through additional taxes. But initially, the, the, the math was not very solid. Mm -hmm. The government estimated that in the case of Volkswagen, they would recover the spending in less than five years. That was based on erroneous assumptions. It was since corrected in good part thanks to reports that we produced. And for their most recent announcement, Nordvolt, they used our own methodology, which is much more realistic than the initial estimate in the case of Volkswagen. The other one that, that your report looked at as well uh, was the government decision that dominated a lot of political debate around the home heating oil um, and their decision to suspend the carbon tax on that one. What will that cost this government? Well, it could cost close to nothing because the suspension of the carbon tax on home heating fuel is reducing the rebate that will be going back to households in provinces where the federal backstop regime applies. So it could end up costing nothing to the federal government, depending exactly how they, they finance that. But we don't have all of the details mm -hmm. yet, but we're, our assumption is that it will be cost neutral for the government as it will reduce the rebates going to households. And I know you're apolitical, but this is happening in a very political environment where there are even more asks now to do away with that carbon tax. Do you think that it will continue to have that formula where because the rebates that they're putting out will be lower, that it won't cost that much even if they have to do more carve outs, which this government has said they won't be doing? Well, we'll have to wait and see how, whether there will be further carve-outs and mm -hmm. how they'll be designed and what will be the financing mechanism, whether it'll be through reducing the, the rebates that are sent to households or whether it'll be funded out of general revenue. So can't speculate on that. We haven't seen anything on that front yet.
Yeah, and what are you expecting on Tuesday in the fall economic statement? I mean, are you expecting um, them to really sort of set that fiscal path if the Prime Minister today was saying that they always exercise uh, fiscal responsibility? Do you expect or are you more hoping that you see that on Tuesday? Well, what we're looking for is having the government indicate what its fiscal anchor is. So mm -hmm. what's the basis for its spending and taxing decisions? You say anchor. They have used the term guardrails in the past. Guardrails. An anchors anchor. almost seem like they're gone now. Well, they, they switch anchors <laughs> from debt servicing costs as right. a share of revenues to a declining debt to GDP ratio. So we'll be looking at whether the anchor declining debt to mm -hmm. GDP ratio or the guardrail, whether that still holds and what's the trajectory of that fiscal anchor. Because the Prime Minister today insisted that in the G7, Canada has the lowest debt uh, or, or debt or mm -hmm. deficit, I forget which one he had said. Um, you know, is that still a good anchor for people to sort of hang on to here? That's probably a very good, good anchor comparing to G7 countries, but there's also G20 countries. Yeah. So you have to be careful the comparison group that you choose. But the G7, we're part of the G7, so it's um, as good a comparison as, as any other. And it, that's true that compared to G7 peers, we're in good fiscal shape. Yeah, okay. And hopefully we will see how good that fiscal shape is on Tuesday. Mr. Yves Giroux, the Parliamentary Budget Officer, thank you so much for joining us, as always. Appreciate it. Pleasure.